In this episode, I visit the Beeste Kral station. I stand under a marula tree and I put my bike on a trailer. So, good morning. How's it? Welcome to my channel. Uh, yeah, today I got all my things packed and I'm on my way to Wattenberg district. Going to camp there for the night. Gonna take a ride now to Beeste Kral. It's about a uh, hundred and so kilometers away from here. Check if I can get some breakfast there. And then from there I'm gonna go to uh, Pilansberg and Sun City. Uh, I'm not gonna go inside, but I'm gonna go around. It's a very beautiful area to ride around at anyway. So I just wanna show you and uh, tell you about it a little bit. So uh, yeah, thanks and uh, enjoy the video. Uh, yeah, here we are in a little bit of the western part of Pretoria. Just uh, getting out of the city now. I'm gonna turn right here up uh, Horn's Neck. I'm gonna ride a little bit next to the Mahalisberg. So that front is the Mahalisberg. It runs all the way from Kalinen up to Vastenburg. 160 km long. We're going to be riding next to the Mahalisberg. Okay, you have a good day. We'll see you later. Okay, yeah, start. Van Beck uh, Cheetah Research Center. Here they have uh, tours where you can come and see how they do research on cheetahs and looks like also uh, wild dogs. Here we are getting to Brits. But this town is uh, very important for the platinum mining industry in the world. 94% of the world's platinum comes from South Africa and 80% of that comes from this uh, Brits and Rustenburg district. They are very scarce uh, mineral. Uh, only a few hundred tons every year is being mined of that. So this whole area is uh, very important for mining chromium and platinum mining. Silver radium. The center of Fritz.
We arrive now here at the Beeste Kraal station. So I'm gonna have a little breakfast and coffee. It's a popular stopover point for people traveling on this road between Tabazimbi and, and Brits. There's quite a few other bikers here as well. Wonder where they have been or going to. So this is the Beeste Kraal station. It's a little uh, restaurant and craft center here, but just a little bit north of Brits, on the way to Tabazimbi. It was uh, named Beeste Kraal by some foot trackers in 1837 when they arrived here and they found quite a few cattle kraals here. Today the locals have uh, created quite a beautiful settlement here with a craft center and a beautiful restaurant and stopover point. Okay, yeah, from here I'm going to uh, Sun City and Landsberg direction. Like about uh, 68 kilometers from here. Said the first part of the road is not too great, but after I get to the main R566 road, then uh, the road will be a bit better. Let's see. I just want to explore the area a little bit and uh, I can see what it looks like from this side. Never come to Pilata from this way. of uh, Pilansberg. Welcome to Pilansberg National Park. Pilansberg National Park is South Africa's fourth largest national park. It's about 550 square kilometers. It is very accessible. It's about uh, only three hours drive from South Africa's largest city, Johannesburg. So it's very easy to break away for a weekend or even just for a day to come and spend the day in the wilderness. 
Landsberg National Park is situated within a, an ancient volcanic crater. This volcano happened uh, 1.2 billion years ago. And now uh, what we see today is the remnants of uh, that volcanic crater. In 1979, Operation Genesis was started where they erected 110 kilometers of game fence and also 188 kilometers of roads within the park. Together with that, also 6,000 animals was reintroduced into the park. Bilansberg National Park lies within the uh, transitional zone of the wet Lofeld region and the drier Kalahari region. This uh, rich diversity gives the opportunity for lots of different animals and also bird life to uh, flourish here. Almost all of South Africa's mammals to be able to strive here, including the big five, also impalas and springboks that are normally not found together. At the time of the start of the park, the park was inhabited by three different tribes, mainly the Bakubung and Bakatla tribes. Also several farms owned by uh, whites in the southern part. In the 1960s, under the apartheid government, these uh, farmers was bought out and uh, the tribes moved out of the area to uh, settlements around the park. At the time, Sun International also bought part of the land to the south and established an entertainment area called Sun City, which also attracts many of visitors every year for uh, either a million dollar golf challenge, also a very large uh, casino area and uh, family entertainment. So yeah, this is uh, Pilansberg. Unfortunately, we can't go in there with the bike. There is uh, big dangerous animals around. You might be able to still go to the Manjani Resort, which is just next door to here. It is still just outside of the main park area. You can find out for you if you want to. We can come with a bike and then uh, to uh, organize game drive in the park. But other than that, you're welcome to come with your own car. The roads are uh, pretty accessible for any normal road going car. And then you can explore the whole park by yourself in your own time. Yeah, how's it? It's a little bit uh, change of plans. I was on my way from Pilansberg to uh, the camp and then my uh, throttle just got stuck. Looks like my throttle cable is broken. So I'm here uh, next to the road. Luckily the people from the camp said they're going to come and rescue me, so that's super awesome. Uh, luckily I do have water with me and some snacks. Uh, it's always good to have some uh, enough water with you. Luckily I'm here in the shade as well. But if I didn't have any water or uh, there was no shade here, I would have really been stuck. Yeah, buddy is standing here, he's not moving. It was a little bit of a scare because the throttle just got stuck as I was overtaking someone. And uh, yeah, the revs just kept on going up. I had to switch off the bike with the uh, on-off switch. Yeah, and then just uh, keep the clutch in until I could stop next to the road. It was a little bit scary, but uh, luckily I did stop safely and uh, now I'm here in the shade. Uh, but I'm stuck here underneath a, a Marula tree. These uh, trees are very common in South Africa. It's an indigenous tree. And uh, yeah, they make these types of uh, marula fruits. Excuse my dirty hands, I've been working on my bike. Uh, these uh, marula fruits is what they make uh, amarula liqueur from. And uh, they make some different shampoos and yeah, hand soaps and so from it as well. It's not much uh, fruit flesh to eat as well. Because the seed is very big, so you rather just try and peel it and then suck on the seed. It's not easy to peel either. But yeah, also if you go to places like Kruger now, it's also littered with uh, elephant dung filled with uh, these marula seeds. Yeah, so um, I've uh, spent the night here at the Roibok Kopi campsite. 
me and the bike, but the bike unfortunately is still on the trailer. Actually this morning I had a look, I took the side panels off and then I went to have a look what the cable looks like and uh, unfortunately the cable is uh, completely broken and it's quite mangled so there is uh, no, no way to fix it here. So uh, they're still gonna take me back on the trailer home, back to Pretoria. But uh, luckily he still came to camp here, which is a very nice campsite. So I just want to show you a little bit what the campsite looks like. So they are still working on it. It's still pretty new, it's only about a year or so that they've been open. You can see each uh, campsite is quite secluded. Yeah, you don't really see or uh, bother your neighbors at all. So what is very nice about this campsite, it's really in the bush and it's uh, just here in between the mountains. It's super nice here. So the campsites have a lot of shade. So you can also spend the day here. You can always find a shady spot. Uh, the road in here was not too bad. They actually recently graded the road. Yeah, now I want to show you the ablutions, which they made really nice. I was quite impressed. So they used old pallets to uh, build the showers with. So I think they said there's uh, two pairs of showers and two pairs of toilets. Bathrooms and shower. Pretty decent, nothing wrong. So yeah, it was a Roibok Kopi campsite. Can I really recommend it. Yeah, the people is very hospitable here. Uh, they came a few times to come and check if we need anything. At the moment they don't have any electricity here. So you're very much uh, supposed to come self-sufficient, bring some power banks. So yeah, we spent a very nice uh, braai here, made a very lovely dinner and now we're just packing up before I'm gonna go back to Pretoria. Thank you, Roy Bokopi. was it thank you for watching again i hope you enjoyed the video you can always follow me on facebook or instagram if you enjoyed the video please press the like button also uh, subscribe to my channel for future videos coming soon thank you for watching see you next time